Hi, uh, my name is Ray Catolo, and <laughs> I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> uh, you see, that's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. You'll come to learn that I am full of them. I am also full of organs. Now, you see, I, I love jokes. I, I really do love jokes. So much so that 18 years ago, I decided to be born. And I, not a joke because, like, my life's a joke, but I, I, I guess not all of them can work, just like how not all comedians can work. I mean, you can high-five me on that one, Rodney Dangerfield. What? You can't high-five me? Huh? You're dead? Well, pff, I thought you were just continually out of work like the rest of the comedians. Now, <laughs> don't I just look stupid? <laughs> uh, Jeez, you guys can lighten up a bit. I mean, it's, we got a long way to go here together. <laughs> I, I mean that literally, because death is so close, but it's also so far away. Now, now well, actually, no, that's not, let's not think about that. How about instead, for the next half hour, or for however long I decide to drag this thing out, let's try to forget about all of the bad parts, or, at the very least, bring them up and laugh at them. I mean, I'm not really sure where I'm heading with this just yet, and hopefully you're not either, because then we can witness something either really beautiful together or laugh at a massive failure. I mean, you could also just laugh at my face, too. I'm a very stupid-looking person. Or you could also just laugh in general, because the silence is creeping in, and it's kind of starting to scare me. So it's great to be here in Zavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavav
relax. That that doesn't matter. What matters is that you thought it was funny. <laughs> of course I thought it was funny. In fact, I thought it was hilarious. I mean, it's the woods. Of all places, the woods, all right, are not the suburbs. <laughs> It's that element of surprise that gets him, you know? Just coming in like, whammo, bammo, you know? <laughs> I know, I know. Look, all right, you can't worry about how the crowd will react. You just have to hope that they'll connect with what you're saying. I mean, what's worse, performing comedy for the deaf or doing a set at a college campus cafeteria? Ooh, that's true. The deaf are too busy trying to talk to throw food at me. <laughs> you see? That's all right. <laughs> I guess it was. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm, start, I'm starting to feel like I'm going to kill at my next gig. You will, but, like, maybe not actually kill, though. Oh, no, 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 that'd be bad. Not only that, I don't think your jokes are that good. For, like, people to choke from their laughter? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, I agree, but I'm also kind of offended. I mean, you shouldn't be, though. This will only be, like, what, your second performance? But still, you should have some faith in me. I didn't know faith extended to hoping your jokes killed somebody. Well, isn't that the essence of faith? You mean people dying. It, I mean, it's like the driving force of religion. So it's like a Pope mobile. It's like the Pope mobile. Hey, are we at the next gig yet? Hello. <laughs> it's great to be here. Uh, well, uh, I should probably introduce myself. My name is uh, Ray Catolo, and uh, I'm an alcoholic. Gosh, yeah, I already did that one. Um... Uh, uh, so you guys got some great woods here. I, I grew up in a build. No, no, that's not it. Wait, that's not that backwards. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, so airline food, right? So, so, ma so many people have a problem with it, but I have a problem with people having a problem with it. Like, it can't be that bad, can it? I mean, I wouldn't know. I haven't flown on a plane. Oh, um, do, do you know about it? Do you hate airline food? No, but you know what? I, I don't know how I could. You haven't told me. I hate you. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know how you could know that. I, I barely know me, and I hate myself. I hate the idea of you. Uh, oh, I, I'm not sure how to. When I look at you, it hurts me on the inside. I, I think that's what you were getting. Like the concept of you literally disgusts me. I mean, I feel you there, pal. You know what? I can't do it anymore. I'm just gonna leave. You don't have to, but... No, I think it's for the best. I, I mean, I'm not stopping you. You're forcing me to leave, though. You're kind of choosing to go on your own will. I'd stay if you weren't on the stage. But... I'm already, like, halfway out the door, so I'm just gonna stop this here. Oh. Huh. Well, <laughs> I, I, I guess we'll start from the beginning. Uh, hi, my name is Ray Catolo, and I'm a comedian. I wish that wasn't a joke. Oh my god, that show was awful. I was having a blast listening to it. But the crowd wasn't. Like, did you hear them? They were totally against me. Hey man, sometimes that'll happen. Remember, they even turned against Jesus Christ. I'm starting to think I'm not Jesus Christ, though. You're not, though. Did you actually think that? I mean, I had no control over the stage. And I, I thought I just naturally came off dominant. I can't tell if you're doing a bit right now. Why would that be a bit? That show is awful. That would be a bit because it was funny. How was that funny? Funny in that you are the anti-poster child to masculinity. What, what does that mean? Right. You're the only man I know with a feminine build. That That's a little rude, isn't it? But it's funny. You need to be able to laugh at yourself. If you're asking people to laugh at their shortcomings, you gotta be able to laugh at your own. That would require me to have shortcomings now, wouldn't it? You see, you're on your way. Look. This is the last place I could book within a five-mile radius because your mom won't let us leave the city limits. This is your last chance. Well, I mean, when you say it like that, it will be my last chance. Why can't you do this stuff on stage? Because it's not funny. But it is. <sighs> it's not how funny works. You don't get to decide how funny works. But I'm the comedian. Are you the one laughing? I mean, sometimes. Then you gotta ask yourself, who are you performing for? <sighs> you know, I, I, I don't know. Should probably figure that out. Yeah, I should, shouldn't I? Please welcome to the stage our next comedian. At least that's what some people call him. Now, give a nice, but not too nice, round of applause to Ray Katala! Thank you, thank you. No, please stop. You don't know what you're in for. 
Yeah, I, I'm not used to a nice introduction. And usually I have to introduce myself. <laughs> wow, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not used to the laughter either. I guess that speaks for me as a comedian. That means you're a bad comedian. Now you don't have to explain the joke. Oh, that was a joke. Oh, that was a comeback. Can we get security on this guy, please? I have some jokes to tell. If you can even call them jokes. You know, I'm impressed you can be dragged out of a theater and heckle at the same time. Not many people can multitask. Now then. Hi, everybody. I think I should introduce myself. My name is Ray Catolo, and I'm an alcoholic. Of course, that's a joke. Oh, you like that one? Great. I got a few more. I had a great idea to start selling a low-fat milk product in the Middle East. Because that seems like an untapped market. For instance, you, sir. Do you know if they sell low-fat milk in the Middle East? You don't. No, nobody knows if they do. So that's why this is such a profitable idea. So I realized I, I'm actually onto something, so I should start kind of creating a product, a brand. When it, com when it comes to me that I need a great name for my product in order to sell it. Take, for instance, the name Trump. Now, that's not that funny now, but... So I needed a great name for my low-fat milk option in the Middle East when it, it just came to me one day. Uh, I was just sitting down, and then, boom, the greatest possible name for a low-fat milk option in the Middle East popped into my head. And I decided that I would call this product Mooslin. Shoot, that was his best joke. Also, I think it was his only joke. Okay, well, uh, your, your feedback is appreciated. Uh... <laughs> What else? Hmm. <laughs> oh. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Like, before I came here, I did a comedy show for the deaf. And not even they liked my jokes. <laughs> oh. But what makes us laugh? They... they Sir, do, do, you, do you, you, sir, what makes you laugh? Do you know? No, no, you don't. I was beaten as a child. Okay, so we know that doesn't make us laugh. <laughs> but what if I was? Because I was. Metaphorically. <laughs> okay, we're finding where the line is. <laughs> Trust me, I've got material for this. He does not have material for this. Um, I like to consider myself an alpha male. <laughs> I mean, sure. For a man, I, I have a more feminine build. <laughs> but I, I don't think that disqualifies me from ruling the animal kingdom, you know? I mean, I've, I've, I've been this way since I was young. I, I, I mean, not totally. I was not this attractive as an infant, and if you think I was, I have a friend I'd like for you to talk to. His name is The Police. But I was always a wimpy kid. Like, if I was working behind the counter at a convenience store, and you came in telling me to give you the money in the register, I would apologize to you for having kept it from you. When I was younger, though, I, I, I had a bully, as you can assume by how I look. As a matter of fact, I, I, I think I see him in the crowd. I, I only thought I saw him. I guess he must still be haunting me. But I was also a detached child. I, I never knew how to feel about anything. I, I experienced all of the wrong emotions, or, or so the emotions I was taught. Like, I would be happy at my grandfather's funeral and sad at every other second of my life. So I had this bully, right? I'm actually asking if I had a bully. Sir, do you know if I had a bully? You don't? Good, the facade is still intact. So I had this bully, right? And there was one day when he came across the playground to confront me, and I, I, I just stood still because I may not know how to feel conventional emotions, but I do know fear. And my, my bully grabs me 
by the belt straps of my dungarees, flipped me over, and shook the milk money out of my pockets. Now, petrified in this state, I was conflicted about how I should feel. Because on one hand, I was upset that he was taking my milk money. But on the other hand, I was upset that I was paying him to do it. I, I can't believe it. I'm, <laughs> I'm literally killing. No, you're not. What? Yeah, whatever you were just believing wasn't real. Didn't happen. How could that have not been real? It felt real to me. Well, it wasn't real to reality. Let's play back what actually happened. So for exposition, we didn't even get to the gig. We were staying at a motel because your mom didn't want you living in her house if you were really going to pursue this whole comedy thing. And it was about three in the morning when I wake up to see you going. You're kidding. You're the comedian, remember? I don't know if I am anymore. Hey, there's nothing wrong with dreaming, except mistaking it for reality. So there's everything wrong with dreaming. Yeah, I didn't really think that went through. <sighs> I, th I think I'm only joking with myself at this point. Why am I even trying to do comedy? Wait, you're trying to? I, I mean, I use the term try loosely. Ray, comedy's natural. The funniest moments in life aren't those that are supposed to be funny. They're the ones that aren't. That's why we laugh even harder at them. If that's the case, then why does nobody laugh at my shows? Yeah, I didn't think that one either. No, uh, I, but I, I appreciate the effort. But God, a dream sequence seems like a cheap cop-out. People love The Wizard of Oz, don't they? They do? It is pretty cheap. Yeah, it is. It totally is. Like zero originality. Or creativity. Or both. Definitely both. But why do I feel like I need to do this? Because you have something to say. But I have nothing to say. Maybe that's what you have to say. That sounds like a cheap meta cop out. But meta's in right now. <sighs> You're right, it is. People love self-referentiality. That's not a word, is it? It's not a word. Uh, sounds like one, though. That's why I said it. You had me convinced. And that's what matters. You had me convinced. If only I could convince myself, but well, why, why do I have to convince myself? The only faith you need in this world is in yourself. But I'm so worthless. Life is beautiful, isn't it? <sighs> How long do we have until my last show? You have until now. Wait, wait, what? We're at the club? Oh, no. It was just another dream. Damn it! Wait, then when is the gig? It's tomorrow night. I can't wait until tomorrow night! Our, our next comic is a, a, a man. Uh, give it up for Rod Godelon. Uh, uh, thank you. Two things. One, that is not my name. <laughs> Two, how do you know I'm a man? I mean, I'm flattered, but... But I feel like I'm always at odds with myself. They, don't get me wrong, I loathe myself, and that usually overpowers every other emotion, but I'm also audacious enough to believe in myself. Like, I was talking with a friend of mine when we were driving somewhere, and I was telling him about how hard it is to feel like you can amount to something and do something great. He, he looked over at me when I was talking about this, and he said, I thought you hate yourself. Uh, I said to him, it's a hard life, ain't it? <laughs> I, I am a very sad person, though. <laughs> oh, don't mistake that laughter for joy. That That's the only way I can express pain. You can laugh at that. <laughs> and see how we all just expressed pain? It felt good, didn't it? Not really. Why, well, why, why didn't that feel good, sir? Because I'm still alive. Oh, well, th this just got interesting. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't laugh. Actually, no, laugh, but <laughs> not at him. My man, the pain only subsides. It, it, it is, it's never expelled. I don't know why some of you in the crowd look uncomfortable. Did you think you came to a comedy show? <laughs> I, I guess I hate that I'm strange. 
Like that's part of the reason why I hate myself. Like for instance, I'm not socially acceptable by society standards, and it's not just because I chose to leave the house like this. <laughs> now I understand some of you can't see if you're listening at home, but uh, he here's a description of how I look. So I'm not socially acceptable, right? <laughs> like I can't just be around people and operate solely on my internal monologue. For instance, when I'm out in public, I, I love to observe people, how they act and how they talk and so on. But what I've learned from my observations is that people are made uncomfortable by my binoculars. <laughs> that there, there are many reasons for me to hate myself, though, not just those. Though, I feel like hate is the essence of love. Like, for me to truly hate something, I have to know everything about it. There's an affectionate amount of dedication to real hatred. <laughs> like the nuances, the minuscule details that compose the grand portrait of our existence. Take, for instance, Rush Limbaugh. That bumbling pile of gastric fumes polluting the airwaves of this partisan drivel and manufactured truth broadcasted on three radio networks within a five-mile radius at the same time of day. That's a little rude, ain't it? I'm sorry. Is Rush Limbaugh your father? <laughs> but for me to so colorfully describe Rush Limbaugh, I have to know the guy. There's some love to it. I, I, I don't know. I, I still feel like I want love, though. Maybe because I don't get it for myself. <laughs> or because that's how I'm programmed. But... There was a girl. That's all. <laughs> Throughout all of human history, the span of millions of years, there was a single girl. She was then no longer single when she conceived humanity. And that's the story of the Virgin Mary. I meant that I fell for a girl. That, that's how my face ended up like this. No, no. Stop it. I, I just can't. I felt a connection with a girl. There we go. That connection was that she was my mother. No. <laughs> I just can't get this out, can I? <sighs> I felt like I had something with a girl. And no, I didn't think that I got her pregnant. Look, I'm just going to keep going because clearly I can't say this correctly. I, I, I thought she was into me too, though. That was, that was really what did it for me. But she was also really into poetry. So then I, I, being into her, I decided I would write some poetry for her. And she loved them. She thought that I was so poetic in my words. Though, the only thing I was really conveying poetically was that I was desperate. <laughs> but she was really into poetry and art. So much that she actually went and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on art and such. But she wasn't going out and buying, like, original Emerson prints or Picasso pieces. She went to art school. <laughs> and that was when I'd like to bring her up to the stage. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. She's not here. I think. Who's that walking out? <laughs> but there was something sincere in what I felt for her. For once in my life... I thought about something other than myself. And that was great. Because I hate myself. <laughs> and I feel like it's those moments that we should try and pursue in this life. Like, we're all trying to be a part of something greater. That's why people get into religion or become sports fans. The problem is, that th th those are just flat out both wrong and stupid. The, the only thing that we've been gifted in this life is the ability to learn, our ingenuity. And trust that I know this, because clearly I have not been gifted anything else. <laughs> For those of you at home, that's a joke about how I'm ugly, because, well, quite frankly, I, I am. <laughs> However, it seems a lot of us are scared to learn more about ourselves. Like... We're frightened of the idea that we are all we have. 
there's nothing more to us. We're all going to die. Didn't think we'd take that turn, did you? <laughs> but honestly, I'm, I'm happy hating myself. Because in those moments where I am separated from my being and instead part of something more meaningful, I, I feel grateful. But I mean like truly meaningful, not, not, not that religion or anything else I was talking about. <laughs> Part of the human experience is investigating our own experiences. That's the foundation of learning. Being able to examine our behaviors, our emotions, our desires, and understand them, or at the very least admit we don't understand them, <laughs> then there's nothing to be scared of. Except werewolf Hitler. And he's coming. <laughs> but think about it. We are gifted the ability to perceive. Okay, so I, I lied about the learning thing being the only thing we were gifted, but we have this gift to witness our surroundings. And then eventually, whammo! Bye bye! Eternal darkness. I know. <laughs> I mean, sure. You can believe in an afterlife, too. But keep in mind that religion is a leftover construct implemented into society as a means of preventing rebellion by the lower classes with the promise that there is something more to their existence so that their misery could be parlayed into eternal joy in an afterlife that is inconclusively present. But just know that all of those words I said themselves say maybe I should believe in something else. <laughs> now, I wouldn't be a comedian if I didn't rant about religion now, would I? But just like that, our, our time is going to be up. As I stood on this stage confessing parts of myself that I've, quite frankly, hidden out of fear of unearthing a substance that would pollute the airs, I remembered. I'm not Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> but this is what life is. All of you, s sitting in the shadows, are looking up at me. We're sharing a moment. I forgot that I hate myself. You see me speaking of topics you yourself may deal with or have never considered. You're watching a life unfold before the curtain falls and I head toward the darkness, maybe to never see any of you again. And you know what? That's okay. Because for as short-lived as this life is, it's the only thing that I truly know. I have been Ray Catola. Thank you. Thank you. Never felt that good after a show before. That that was fantastic. What are you talking about? You didn't tell a single joke. Please don't tell me I was dreaming the whole thing again. You weren't, but you just didn't have a joke. I mean, some clever lines here and there, but no jokes. B but did you hear how it resonated with the crowd? We learned something about ourselves last night. Yeah, we learned that you're not funny. And who are you to judge? I'm your manager. That's kind of my job. It's a little late to reveal that, don't you think? I figured they could have figured that out by now. That's true. They're a smart bunch of those listeners. Not sure how smart they are after listening to this. But, I mean, I said some provocative stuff out there. I, I really felt like I poured myself out on that stage. But they don't want to hear about you. They want to hear jokes. And you're telling me life isn't the greatest joke. A joke is about how a goose crosses a street and marries a homeless guy. Not about how we're all going to die and that none of this matters. But none of this does matter! You can't tell them that, though! So am I supposed to just let them perpetuate the societal doctrine which aims to distract from the essence of the human experience in exchange for capital gains and uninformed masses? Yes! Oh, um, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't think that's what I want. Look, you artistic wannabe punk. This isn't about you. You're out there to make them forget about their troubles and jokes about dairy farms and wacky hats. If you want to go out there and make some kind of statement, then go open up some goddamn art exhibit. Don't use comedy to make that statement. I just don't think this is for you. I, I, I don't think my material's for you. Really? You're going to turn on me now? After all that I've done for you, pretending like your jokes were good, making sure you didn't emotionally collapse, because, quite frankly, you're awful at this. 
Now you think because you're proud of something that you can just dismiss any of my input? That's kind of exactly what I'm saying. I I'm not sure what you don't understand. I made you, alright? So you should understand that I know what's best for you. What's best for me is to be true to myself. And maybe also to stop doing all this heroin. Since when did you do heroin? Since I told that joke! Now is not the time for jokes! But this entire thing is a joke! It's not a joke! Look, if you're not able to laugh at your own shortcomings, how can you expect others to do the same? Don't you quote me against me. That's more you're against yourself. Well, that's a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? Yeah, that's kind of why it's funny. I don't see it. Maybe if you put a wacky hat on it. Then I would. Then you would. Hmm. You pontificating? You got it. About what? This. How so? Like, was there actually a point you were trying to make with this? Not really, no. No point at all? I don't think so. Then why'd you do it? Do what? That! You have to be more specific. I'm trying to make it ambiguous for interpretation's sake. Oh, I, I gotcha. But you still have to be more specific. That set, how much of it was real? I don't know if I should say all, most, or none. So then why did you do it? I, I mean, why not? None of this matters anyway. I did what I wanted to do, and people loved it. Did they really? I mean, who cares?